I, I, from what I understand uh, from uh, talking to uh, activists in Hamas and also from talk, talking to the Shin Bet, this is a growing concern in the Israeli military, in the Israeli Shin Bet, and I think that uh, we are going to see increase increasing these activities very soon. This is why the IDF uh, is not waiting and is diverting forces, uh, big forces, uh, big uh, reinforcements to uh, be brought in to the area of Hebron, to the area of Bethlehem, because apparently uh, Hamas and the Islamic Jihad are trying uh, to uh, open a new front in the south of Judea, Samaria, in Judea area, in order uh, to uh, ease the uh, Israeli pressure on Jenin and on Tulkarem. Uh, as you know, uh, five days ago, the IDF started a big uh, operation called the summer camps uh, in the north of, 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 of Samaria, uh, on the uh, strongholds of Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Jenin, Tulkarem, Nablus, all this area is full of terrorists, uh, according to the estimation of the IDF, we're talking about uh, between 800 and two, to 2,000 to 1,000 uh, armed the terrorists, uh, and uh, uh, the operation still goes on. But now they're trying to ease the Israeli pressure on this uh, uh, on these towns, uh, Jenin and and and, and Tulkarem, by uh, opening a new front against Israel in Judea area, in Hebron area, and in Bethlehem area. Yanni, is Hamas not concerned about public opinion anymore? I mean, so far this method has not yielded a lot of results. They've not, not a lot of people have been hurt. But should this continue any further, isn't Hamas worried about losing international support? Well, they say that they don't have anything to lose anymore as far as, as public opinion is concerned because, you know, the, uh, their image in the world is of a terrorist organization since the massacre, the big massacre that they carried out on uh, October 7th uh, in uh, uh, the settlements uh, in the Jewish communities near Gaza where they uh, uh, murdered brutally uh, murdered and uh, raped and killed uh, 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 1,200 Israelis and kidnapped uh, 200, 250 more into Gaza. So, so uh, their, image is is, is their image is already wrecked. So uh, now uh, that's, they're using the, this, what they call the strategic weapons of suicide attacks in order to try and save, save, save themselves from the pressure of the Israeli army. So now that Hamas has embraced their inner terrorists, not that they needed to do that, are we likely to see more effective bombings? And are we likely to see a change in Israeli policy towards them? I mean, are we go going to see even more detentions and an attempt to destroy the infrastructure? Or are we going to see a slightly saner approach from the IDF where they're actually going to try to stop the terrorists from doing what they're doing? I personally personally think that uh, we've been very lucky uh, since uh, August 19, when this uh, bomb uh, exploded in Tel Aviv uh, and there was only one person slightly injured. Uh, we were very lucky, but uh, luck does not continue. There's no 100%. And uh, uh, the big question is what will happen if they succeed? Uh, to carry out a big uh, a suicide attack in Tel Aviv, for instance, or in Jerusalem, God forbid, or uh, or in Haifa, uh, and many people will be killed because we remember what happened in the Second Intifada. We remember the horrible uh, things that they did to uh, the Israelis on uh, in the Second Intifada. So I think we have been very lucky. Actually, what we see. Uh, this uh, IDF operation uh, uh, in the north of uh, Judea and Samaria called the summer camps, this is the uh, name of this operation, actually it's a preemptive strike on the in infrastructure of Hamas and Islamic Jihad in the north of the West Bank, in the north of the Samaria, in order to prevent uh, uh, such uh, attacks inside Israel. So, uh, there, there have been uh, some success for the IDF in these operations. They managed to, to kill so far about 30 terrorists and find uh, laboratories to manufacture uh, bombs. They, they arrested uh, uh, like 50 terrorists and they injured 
uh, some dozens more, but uh, this is not enough. Uh, uh, we have to accelerate uh, the, the, the momentum and we have to take, take advantage of, of, of our success. And, and we have all the time to chase the terrorists and not to let them, not to leave them alone. The minute you leave them alone, they will try to uh, uh, to make a suicide attack. And we already see that even though there is a, a military operation going on uh, in the north of uh, Samaria, they're still trying to make terror attacks, like this morning with this booby-trapped car in yeah. in Atere. So, so to change the policy, the IDF has to change the policy. We have to adopt to take the methods of fighting terrorism like we do in Gaza Strip and implement it inside Judea and Samaria. OK, so it's important to understand that IDF incursions into Tulkarem and Jenin are not acts of occupation. They are self-defense against this, uh, well, ar terror army. But it begs the question, how has Hamas gotten to be so strong and equipped in the north of Samaria? Whose responsibility is it to make sure that it doesn't become another terror nest? And why are they not doing it? Right. You ask a very good question. As you know, uh, these areas of Jenin, uh, uh, Tulkarem, Nablus, uh, and the surrounding villages and surrounding refugee camps are all located in what is called Area A. Area A. This is, according to uh, Oslo Agreement, is the responsibility of the Palestinian Authority, of the PA. They are in charge. Uh, to fight terrorism in these areas and uh, and and to keep law and order. Uh, but what has happened in the last three years is that uh, Iran uh, took over uh, north of Samaria, uh, using as proxies as uh, as uh, 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 mercenaries uh, the uh, Hamas and Islamic Jihad and Fatah and the Popular Front uh, terrorists, recruiting them putting them on the payroll of Iran, they get uh, big salaries uh, for carrying out terror attacks. Not only that, they provi provide them with weapons, they provide them with uh, explosives. This is all being smuggled from Iran to the south of Syria, from south of Syria to north of Jordan, and from north of Jordan through the uh, Jordan Valley into the north of uh, Judea and Samaria. So uh, this is... Uh, the situation is on the, on the ground is now that we have an Iranian terror army in the north of Samaria, and they managed to push away the PA. Uh, uh, the PA uh, does not uh, want to fight them, they does not want to have any clashes with them. So they retreated from these areas, and now the Iranian terror army is controlling the north of, of Samaria. And when you ask the head of the PA, uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen, when the uh, people around him ask him, why don't you fight them? He says, this will bring a, a civil war in the, in, the, in the West Bank, in Judea and Samaria, and I don't want uh, that uh, my heritage will be written in Palestinian uh, uh, history as the one who brought a civil war to the Palestinian people. So this is the bottom line. The bottom line is that the PA that we are supposed to be negotiating a settlement with and trusting them with equipment and weapons that they won't use against us is not willing to use the weapons we gave them in order to enforce the law, to enforce the law, and have in fact allowed Iran to create a border directly with Israel in the north of Samaria. Did, did I get that right? Yeah, you got that right. This is the big, uh, this is the big catastrophe of the Oslo Accords because the uh, the assumption was that uh, you can trust the the PA and they they promised, of course, uh, Yasser Arafat at that time he promised the uh, Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin and Shimon Peres and also uh, Bibi Netanyahu. He promised them that he will fight terrorism and he will do everything to keep. Uh, the terror away from uh, Israel, and uh, what we're seeing on the ground now is that uh, there is a, the Iran managed to establish the, a terror army in the north of the uh, of Samaria, and they are threatening to spread all over the the West Bank and all over the Judean Samaria. And what uh, Mahmoud Abbas 
uh, doesn't understand that eventually uh, their, their goal is also to topple the regime of the PA and take over Judea and Samaria like they did in, in Gaza Strip in 2007. They made a, a coup d'etat and took over uh, uh, the entire Gaza Strip and uh, threw away the PA. And now they're trying to do that also in Judea and Samaria. But of course, Israel is not going to let that happen because uh, luckily we have the IDF and the IDF has the overall security in uh, Judea and Samaria. And uh, what the, the IDF is doing now is trying to prevent this from happening. 